I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing: I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now, just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. The working man is a sucker. Hey, everybody! Welcome to the Working Class Holes Podcast. We're back in the break room. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. Edward. How are you Hello. doing? I'm great. How are you? Good, man. I spilled coffee all over my pants. You know, I really take great <laughs> pride <laughs> in the setup. And it's always right before we go live. I, I spend 30 minutes. I'm like prepped. I'm ready. It's always right when you turn the mics on. I do some shit, like the fucking things fall off, and uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I put Pee Wee behind me today in memory of Paul Rubens. Oh, dude. I don't know if it's going to pick it up on camera, but whatever. I still put it there. It wouldn't fit there. That's another thing I try to do. I try to put it over here with the other shit, and all the fucking sign, the signage fell down, the tiles. That's like the kind you of had stuff. To put that, well, you had to put the words back in the sign? Yeah, because oh, it all fell off. dude, I would have been like, we're not using yeah, the sign today. Yeah, got to do it for the yeah, show. Yeah. But it's, it's aggravating, dude. Oh, dude, the, the minutiae that you go through, I, there's no way I would do it. You pay the price with the edit. I pay the price with all this nonsense. <laughs> I can't help myself. I didn't know you had a Pee Wee Herman doll, dude. I was a huge Pee Wee Herman fan. My, uh, I had him when I was a kid, and obviously all that stuff got ruined. Uh-huh. But then for Christmas one year, I, you know, I was starting to collect all kinds of vintage stuff because of my Peter Pan complex. Yeah, right. I feel like a lot of people have tons of trauma in their childhood, collect all kinds of stuff, try to rebuild their childhood somehow. Uh, interesting. Uh, uh-huh. So, you know, I accept that that's kind of what I do. <laughs> and I asked for it. And it, at the time, it was pretty cheap. I think, I mean, relatively speaking, I think it was probably 200 bucks. Has now, that never been opened? No. Ooh, dude, yeah. that's probably pretty valuable. Yeah, it's just like the box is a little tattered and torn. But beyond that, I think... Mm, it's it's probably good. appreciated since the guy's death. Dude, there's no way that I would be able to. How long have you had it? Oh, like three years. Yeah. The, that that, that uh, plastic cellophane up top would be totally <laughs> Could you would want to play with it. No, it would just, I would throw it in a oh, closet oh, 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 oh. and then throw something else yeah. on top of it. And it's, yeah. And then I'm it, a display guy, so yeah. I, I knew I was going to display yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Dude, Pee Wee Herman, uh, Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure was a huge movie for me, man. I, I, I don't know how It's unbelievable. Was. It's 85, I, so you were probably a teenager. I was 11. Okay, so yeah. close to being a... So I was that, 11. I was four when it came out, so I was more the show, and then oh. I revisited the movie when I got to be a little older. Yes, you never really watched the show, right? It's, the show was Tim later. Burton's first big... Dude. Mo- it, oh, it's unbelievable. Dude, it's, it's a perfect you know what movie. It was? it was one of those movies that was on HBO, because we had gotten cable, I think, maybe like a year... Prior, or just right around that time, and then, like we had HBO, and they didn't have a lot of movies. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so, like they would just. I mean, I must have. I must have seen Pee Wee's Herman Big Adventure. Uh, yeah, or Great Adventure, but Big Adventure. Big Adventure. Yeah. Uh, I must have seen it two hundred times. Well, that's what's funny easily. is that I, we never went to the movies. I don't know if my family was just too broke or too lazy or both, but mm-hmm. we never went to the movies as a like a family. So yeah. HBO, yeah. that's the only time I ever saw movies that yeah. were ever in the theaters when they got to HBO. Totally. So I, you know, I think every month they would play with three or four movies that maybe just got done during their movie theater run. Oh, right. That's because, kind of what they did. Yeah, right? they would play them. So I, mean, I would know some of these movies by heart. I think oh. one of them that's so funny that I know is like a quick change. Oh, I love that movie. I've seen Quick Change probably about 75 times. <laughs> For no good reason, I've seen Quick Change. So good. I mean, with Robards and fucking Bill Murray and yeah, yeah, yeah. Gina Davis. Quaid. He's a clown. Uh-huh. I thought, like, that's the most foolproof plan. Why, why, why aren't more people doing this to Rob Banks? Yeah. I remember thinking that when I was a kid. Like, who's catching this guy? Right. If he's a clown. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a long, long time. That was uh, see, that's what that's what's so funny. It's like some of those movies that you just saw as a yeah. kid a hundred well, times. You're home. Yeah, and exactly. when you're not home, like when you turn twelve, thirteen, you're not home anymore. Right. So you're just out. Yeah, yeah you're just yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. So R.I.P. Buddy. Yeah, buddy. You know what's funny is like now I wonder if a, okay who's so I think the biggest kid star right now is that Miss Rachel lady. My son loves Miss Rachel. So there's oh, a I there's a woman. Either. Okay. But she's also like child learning development educated. So she's an actual educator for kids. She has a degree. Okay. But she essentially created a YouTube channel and whatever she has that she's doing, kids just fucking love. She must have 50 million plus subscribers. I mean, I don't know if that's how many subscribers. She has a ton of subscribers. Huh. Her views are an insane amount of views. Huh. Uh, but I'm thinking like, what if she got caught jerking off in a theater? Like that would be the equivalent oh, yeah, of what yeah, he yeah. went through. 
Well, here's the thing. They don't have theaters like that anymore. It's so weird because that was the tail end of those theaters. Oh, like, like the full on movie theaters. Movie stuff. theaters where you would go to jerk off. Like, because, uh, what was like it? In like in Departed, they showed one. Remember Departed? Was it Departed? like 2004 that he got busted? 2000? Oh, no, no, like 90, 95. Oh, was that? It was I, 95? It, so it was, uh, I think his TV show is like 88 to 94 or 93. What, whatever happened is his show had already ended but i think the way they did his show because it was a saturday saturday morning show is they put it in syndication so he was even though they hadn't aired the final episode it had been done for a minute because uh-huh. remember if he, when his monk shot he had the beard oh like right he threw yeah, all yeah. his stuff out because he yeah. didn't want people messing with him like peewee style so oh, right, he was right, in right. full like that's right incognito oh, right, mode right, right. when he got caught uh-huh but i just remember that being a resurgence for his career, but also devastating. And it's funny now, people are dying for that kind of press. They're influencers uh, right now right, yeah. who would love to get caught with that kind of situation. Because, right, yeah. you know, I don't know if you remember, but like he took it on the chin and then got back in his peewee mode and did a bit at the MTV Music Awards. Oh, he did? He came out and he was like, Have you heard, as Pee Wee? Uh-huh. And he, the first thing he says is, Have you heard any good jokes lately? Oh, that's right. That's right. Because people were just yeah, burning yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he, right. Yeah, yeah, roasted, right. Roasted. Yeah, 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 right. And it was so great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah he, I he's forgot a G, about man. That. He's a G. Yeah, for sure. For I mean, he was like, part of the old, like. Um, to like, shame him like that, where he's doing something in private, you know, they, they put his mug shot out there. It's not like he's. They, they made him as perverse. He's not fit to. You know, well, I think mugshots. I think mugshots were always. Uh, I mean, remember Nick Nolte's mugshot? Oh, that's the best. Oh God! I, I always remember people putting that next to his sexiest man alive. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> that was always the. the but premium. mugshots were always winner. I mean, there was a Sinatra mugshot, right? Like that was always something that yeah. uh, that went around. Yeah, it's always fodder. Yeah, yeah, totally. But Pee Wee Herman was like he was part of like that early because I remember seeing him in like Cheech and Chong movies. Like yeah, the, he was always yeah, it's, it's like around a, like the Groundlings. He always played kind of a weird offbeat I, character. Yeah, yeah, right. And buddy of mine was telling me that um, Phil Hartman was a huge. Yeah. Uh, he was like head writer of the of the show and the Broadway show. Oh, okay. So the, Broadway the Broadway show. show, I believe, is before the TV show. So I think the character is a Groundlings based character that gained momentum, and then I believe he had a Broadway show that got the movie deal that uh, then got the TV show. Gotcha, gotcha, So I gotcha. think that's the progression, if I'm not okay. mistaken. But uh-huh. yeah, so Phil Hartman, he played uh, the sailor, I think yeah. he's Carl. Captain. Captain Carl. Captain Carl, Captain Carl yeah. uh, And he's the writer of the Broadway show as well as the TV show. Yeah, so yeah. what a G. Oh, dude. What a fucking G. Dude. All those guys. Yeah, man. Miss Yvonne, all the, I mean, just. Yeah, man. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, I Good mean, back uh, from Seattle. I wonder if they ever stayed in a Ramada Inn in Seattle, <laughs> in the probably, suburbs of probably Seattle. Not. <laughs> probably not. I'm not sure Miss Yvonne made it to the Ramada Inn. <laughs> that was some wild shit. So, all right. Uh, since we have a little, let's just spend an extra five minutes on, on the stand-up portion of the show to talk about Seattle. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, where do we begin? Okay, it, a buddy of ours, a mutual friend, I was on the phone with him. And he was like, "Man, Seattle looked like it was the shit," and he wasn't the first person to hit me up after all the stuff I was posting uh-huh. uh, from the the tour. And it's funny the perception that social media gives people, right? Because we have we are look like we're having fun, but there was nothing really fun. <laughs> I mean, I mean, us together, like the stories are epic. Every, it was awesome. I had a good time. Great time. I had a good time. But the work, it but, did not show the issues we were having. But we could have a good time just hanging out in Queens, too. <laughs> I mean, I didn't need to get on an airplane. And I mean, it was great content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was super fun. Uh, I had a great time. The shows, you know, uh, for the most part, were good. Yeah, uh, Walla Walla was. Oh yeah, that was that was a bad. That was so cool. That man. would have been a city I wish we could have stayed in. Yeah, totally. Because there was like dude. a college town. Wow, was, that was a so cool shout out to Walla town. Walla. That was yeah. like a, that was a sneaky good yeah. group of people, with the exception of these two people fucking and during my set. I mean, the, uh, oh, I forgot about pe- that. I mean, I, I can't wait to post that. that clip. I mean, those people. 
I have I, a side view. The, uh, oh, I have the side camera where you can see him. Oh, dude, let's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I bury him. It. I'm gonna yeah, bury him. I yeah, cannot yeah. wait. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. send you the clip then, so yeah, you yeah. can figure out how to. Yeah, put we'll it cut together. it together. Because yeah, that's cool. one that I really want to bury that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I can't stand that dude already. That yeah. Mark Davis haircut motherfucker. <laughs> if I could find that guy right now, I'd spit in his face. <laughs> I was. It's funny too because I was in a bad mood. Just the overall, not with us hanging, that was great, but just the overall feeling of some of these things. I was like such in a place of, you know, I'm, I'm hot. I'm a little hot. Yeah, yeah. And that dude, I'd been waiting for about forty five minutes of my set to say something. Well, there's another aspect of that too because when we rolled into that town, we were like, oh, okay, because we were driving for a while. It's a four hour drive. That was a five hour drive. Yeah, yeah, four hours and fifty minutes. Yep. And uh, we get, and then we get into the town. And I'm like, oh, this is nice. And then, um, but so we were like the whole time. It's like a desert. We're driving through a desert. I'm like, where the fuck are we going? And uh, we walk in, and there's porn playing. And not just like, oh, uh, soft core. No, it was like. it's It was full on, girl on girl, high end. I mean, there was no discriminating against what this was. Like, this is something that you would masturbate to. Oh, 100%. But at the same time, like something I've never masturbated to. Like the caliber yes, of that it porn was so was, high end. It was so high end. I was it, like, what is this? It was this? almost artsy. It was yeah, so it was good. right. Yeah, yeah. It was so well lit. Mm -hmm. I think it, you were saying that you recognized the I recognized people the, in it. The, yeah, yeah. Which is always a good sign. Yeah. I'm like, These hey. They're mainstream. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I know them. What are they doing? <laughs> but you know what? And I, is this where you're going with this? Where I made people, because there are people that showed up that have nothing to, people who come to that bar know that's happening. People that are coming to the shows we're doing are from outside entities. They're just right. finding it online. So right. they are not familiar with the venue. Right. So there were people walking in, including this asshole with his date, right. that had never experienced this kind of thing. Right. And I forget that like people, because I, I've had a lot of sex and I've had, my whole life has kind of been the opposite of most people where I'm trying to figure out how to balance my life with sex. Uh, I get that like when, I always forget that when men, certain men see a leg or see a tit and they're like instantly right. horny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not like that. I, yeah. I'm very European that way. It's not a huge, uh -huh. like I, I'm not fixated on it. Right. And watching this like dopey middle-aged white couple on their first divorcee date and how horny they were getting just because that porn was on, I forgot that like people are that basic. Like though that got him in the mood on their first date and yeah, yeah. he couldn't keep his hands off of her. And it's like, I'm all for that, but the, get the, the making out, I cannot wait for people to see this because I had so many audience members shake my hand after that show for first doing shutting that, them down. first yeah, yeah. just destroying yeah. those yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they fled too after the oh, show. Oh, I'm glad. I was, I, totally I was waiting, fled. man. I really yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah. say something. Yep. There's not, like, I was in such a bad mood. Like, there's nothing, you ruined the show. Luckily, I saved it for myself. And then, if you were to say something to me afterwards, I would love to punch you out in front of your date. Like, I was in a punch you out kind of mindset. Yeah, you were in a punch you out kind of mindset. Like, you, I, to be honest, you mostly, I, most of the time, I know, I've known you, you're, you're afraid to punch somebody out. I mean, what was it, uh, where were we? And you hopped out of the car? I'm not gonna comment on that. I don't recall any of that. This guy's tapping hey, on the hey. window like, hey, man, you can't park here. No, he was banging on the window. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, yeah, we got it. We got it. I would be, and, and next thing you know, the door is open and Josh is out of the car. I'm like, okay, this is one way to handle it. <laughs> I'm very embarrassed. The point, uh, the, let's well, be here's clear. what I said about I've been I've been punched in the face a lot, obviously, because of my nose. So I'm not one of these guys that doesn't accept the consequences of jumping out of the car. I know it's. I know what I'm in for. I Dude, I it. just had this conversation the other day. Somebody was talking about, uh, could you, he was like, uh, he asked this guy, he's like, could you beat up Tom Cruise if you had to fight Tom? You just spilled that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> could you beat up Tom Cruise? <laughs> could you beat up Tom Cruise? Because he's like, right, he knows he's all these martial super arts. Trained. Super trained. Has all this training. But he's never been punched in the face. Yeah, that's the Tom thing. Tom Cruise has been put never to the test. been punched in the face. Have you been put to the test? And I've been put to the test. I will stand by that all the time. It's the only reason why I'm comfortable talking about my anger management problems because I'm not one of these dudes that talks all this tough guy shit and who's never been right. put in a position to get his ass beat. Yeah. Like I'm never trying to fight a dude smaller than me. <laughs> no, it's always I'm, a bigger guy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I have a really weird thing about all of that. So... Yes, I think 
Tom Cruise probably could know how to like defend himself. Right. But the minute I throw him through a wall or, ca- or I launch Once him, he gets caught, or I catch him, you catch him, dude. It's over. He's dude. like, what? It's I'm Tom over. Cruise. That's and never- I'm gonna take his wallet. Like, see, I'm taking a step further. <laughs> dude, that would be the best. I'm taking his oh wallet. My God. Just so you know, if I knock you out, I'll I'm taking your wallet. <laughs> Just as a principle, I'm taking your ID. I'm making you go through all kinds of shit. Dude. So. <laughs> That's why I'm always scared someone's going to swing on me out of nowhere. I'm like... I'm waiting for, like, one of these cameras to catch, like, a bunch of, like, licenses in a corner on the wall. <laughs> Josh has just been collecting licenses over the years. The last 20 years. <laughs> oh, shit. What is that behind the, the doll over there? What's well, that the guy's passport? <laughs> I'm totally going through the fucking the walls. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going home, and I'm just, like... Enhance. It's like seven where they find uh, <laughs> Kevin Spacey's lair and he has all that shit hanging up. Yeah, right. Oh, shit, dude. But yeah, it was. Um, so one of the things. So we just to kind of paint a picture. First two days, fine. You know, first two two shows, a little rough, but second one was worked out. Uh, third day, it was just from there driving. Get to Walla Walla. Met some cool people. Shout out to, we met some registered nurses and, oh, yeah, and Miles nurses. from the Miles Mountain podcast was there. Oh, that dude, so yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, a lot of great people we met. Yeah, it was cool. We had to turn right back around and drive four and a half hours back because our next gig, if we were to stay in Walla Walla, would have been a seven hour drive. Right. We have to catch a ferry. Yep. Get on the ferry, get off the ferry. Turns out they have canceled our ferry going home. So we <sighs> think we're going to be spending, dude. you know, pretty much all half the day and the night until 5 30 a.m in this town in the san juan islands and we are freaking out so luckily we end up figuring out dude when the owner of the of the venue came back and said you might be able to sleep on my on the floor at my sister's place and i was just like what the fuck yeah that was brutal uh, that was because you know what it is too it's like i'm not like, 25 no anymore. dude it that's another thing it was like now I'm luckily I trust that the dude had our best interest at heart, but it's still a stranger I don't know. It's yeah. still a place I've never been. Yeah. So luckily we got out of there. Yeah, they they canceled the, the for whatever reason they canceled the ferry and then they re Yeah. Uh, I think they got enough complaints of enough cuz there was people, enough people on that ferry going back where we were I mean, like It was a Saturday night. Yeah, so we yeah, had yeah. enough people where they're probably like, "Listen, yeah. we got to figure this out." Yeah, yeah, right. Uh so we got lucky. And then we get back, another four-hour drive back. That poor kid. I saw that kid. So I went to check what time the ferry was coming in, and it wasn't making all the stops that it was supposed to make. It was just kind of doing the the big one. And uh, that kid was – you didn't see him, but he was do so hard. He was like, he what was do you mean? He was crying. Dude, he was like, I, I don't know. What am I going to do? I, and I it, almost cried when that guy said that we couldn't get – And the guy behind the counter was like a – it was the most New York moment of the whole trip because the guy behind the counter was like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Well, that's funny. No matter where, because we were on this ferry going to the island. It was all this beautiful landscape, this water, the trees. It was fantastic. And you know, Ed and I are taking photos like two uh, gay tourists on our honeymoon. Mm-hmm. We were just like all about the foliage. Mm-hmm. Coming back, we're just like, and couldn't see any of the foliage. It's just a shitty ferry. We're like, this is a Staten Island ferry. <laughs> so no one of these guys act like it, it might as well be Staten Island. One hundred percent, dude. It was so the disgruntled employee level was at ten. The flip, the flip of like the, the travel there to the travel back was just insane. I it had was, an Indian lady behind me. I've never heard anyone snore like this. Oh, and you were like, oh, that's man. exactly how I snore. Yeah. She was. She. It, you could hear it from the other end of the ferry. Yeah. And she had the st- she was stopping too. Oh yeah. She, the, oh man, she was dying. Apnea. She was dying. <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she had multiple dives. <laughs> she had multiple kills during her sleep on that ferry. Uh, and then we get off the ferry, and my phone was dying, and I had to do some shit on it, and I had put it. I couldn't fit it in my bag, and I'd put it on a oh, ledge. I forgot about this. And luckily, this. Ed goes when we get in the car. Do you have your phone? I'm tearing apart my bag. I'm exhausted. I'm like, fucking. I don't have it. He calls it. Smart move on his part. Some lady at the front had it. I got yeah. lucky there. Yeah, Get dude. my phone. Because here's the deal. We leave tomorrow on a red eye dude. and have to take back the car and have to do another show. So dude. we're just like, if we don't get on the ferry, get to where we got to go, it's going to eradicate the whole plan yeah. for the yeah, next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get back, pack our shit, 
get to the next gig, load it up, do the show, hard, hard, hard audience. That was probably uh, one of the hardest audience audiences I've seen in like two years. That was rough. Daytime kind of show, mm -hmm. super early. It was hot. It's so funny, I've kind of blanked it out. I mean, that was a, that was a, I had friends there that came to see me, so you know you want to do well, so I was really, I mean, I put a lot of effort into that show just to get a, Bro. just to get a C plus, B minus. On top of that, I left an extension cord there. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know us. I'm so into these extension cords. That, which like, one? The gray one. Oh. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good one. <laughs> That's pretty good considering all the shit that went wrong. That we, yeah, it's we're not just too down bad. one cord. We're one down cord. Yeah, one, down, down one cord. cord. Yeah. So we get to the airport. Everything is working like clockwork so far. Oh, get to fuck. the airport. We drop the car this. off. Boom, boom, boom. Waiting on the shuttle. Get to the where the shuttle's supposed to go. This is for everyone traveling to Seattle. Your airport is a piece of shit. Seattle Airport, Seattle traffic, your infrastructure is fucked. You need to figure it out. You do not deserve to be on a top 10 city list until you figure this out. Because that was bullshit. We get to the rental shuttle area. There's one taking you to the south uh, terminal. There's one taking you to the north. We're going to the north. That line's around the corner. The south has two people in line. They have two buses come before we have one bus show up. Yeah, dude. Then we get the bus. They crowd us and cram us on this bus, like on another level of cram. Yeah, dude. People's breath are stinking. The fucking BO is on the level 10. There is some accident. This dude's driving with the brake. He's just hitting the brakes. Yeah, you want to yeah, vomit? Yeah. He doesn't turn the AC on in this thing until we pull up to the terminal. <laughs> it took us 20 minutes to go one mile. Yeah. Everyone's basically late. We finally get on the plane. We're about to take off. The guy goes, hey, we got a maintenance problem. We're sitting on the fucking plane for an hour and a half. Bro, do you remember? So we were on the runway, and they went to turn the engines on. Like yeah. That, that sound that happens like right when they're about to like rev it up, and it went, and it just like cut. And he's like, yeah, we got a problem. We got to go back to the gate. That I was, was crazy. The dude. fact that we still got to leave yeah dude because usually in With my experience like that, dude, they make you get on a new plane fucking a. and that's a three hour delay when oh, you gotta 100%, get on a new plane, a new plane. I just remember thinking there's something going on here against us in the universe we just remember we started laughing we were both so delirious we just started cracking up well <laughs> what did i say so they were like you have to unplug you're not allowed to like charge oh yeah phone. yeah i had my thing plugged in <laughs> i was like yeah what the fuck <laughs> i start ta start tapping his cord i go what the fuck ricardo what's going on we're all trying to go home here what are you charge doing? my phone <laughs> The best, I was like, hey, let Ed drive. <laughs> Give Ed a Red Bull and put on a good playlist. Ed can fly this fucker right now. Uh, dude, I did so much driving. I, was, dude, I mean, that when was I got home, dude, that, cra driving. that crash. Like, oh, did you just, sleep for like dude, 12 hours? Just crash. Because I had to work that, that Monday, and I, I caught dude. I was like, yo, I don't know. what. There's we're, no way. Yeah, yeah. I did like an hour's worth of work, but like I just slept, just slept, woke up, and then went back to sleep. I was yeah. back in bed by like... Uh, like 8 p.m. that night, and I, just as I'm going to bed, you sent me that text of uh, misbehaving <laughs> from the Je Righteous Gemstones, and then I'm just laying there in bed, and I got misbehaving, <laughs> just fucking rolling. I was like, God damn it, Ricardo. That show's so fucking Son good, man. <laughs> uh, I had a new cancer joke that worked, though. I like, you know, that I'm talking about cancer. Um, I've been using it. It's a weird thing to talk. People get weird about. Yeah, you dude. It. It's, it's a comedy weird. show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cancer's but like. I a... make it funny, but it's. I actually, I'm enjoying the bait. I right. enjoy baiting them. Right. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. really lean in now to yeah, baiting, yeah, yeah. which is so great for me. Yeah. Because I have something in store for them. Right. That'll yeah. even it all out. Yeah. Um, it is. It's. It's. Uh, um. It's really. It's the dynamics of a cancer joke are that. Yeah. I remember when I had. So I told you I had like a little like melanoma? skin cancer. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't melanoma. It was oh, a wasn't. basal cell, which is like so. It, I mean, the it was like going to the dentist. It was like have I've spent longer in a dentist chair. Oh, okay. At, you know, having a tooth pulled than a uh, than this, but. Uh, I had that huge bandage. I don't know if you remember. We were at the pair. I had this huge bandage on my forehead, and I'm still going up on stage. And it was great because I would not address it. I would do, you know, like eight minutes into my set and just wait for, like, a joke that didn't land and go, I feel like you guys are just looking at my head. <laughs> you know what I mean? Huh? What a great built-in box. Oh, it's net. just great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of fun. Uh, but... Uh, it is a very powerful. I mean, it's listen, you're you're really, you're dealing with, the, like, the... 
the mortality of everybody in the room. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like any kind of yeah, cancer thing is like you, you know it's just like that's the what's like the scariest thing, right? Yeah. Because so many people die from cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I think it's probably the first time ever in my stand up life where I've been able to utilize something that quickly because it took me a long time to figure out how to make a lot of my shit funny in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It took a lot of therapy because mm-hmm. I mean, it's not funny to you. Oh, it's right. impossible to make it funny for Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's things that I can't talk about just because I'm still angry about them. That's you know the problem. I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I took, yeah. I, Or I still think, upset you know, about them or some kind of, I don't feel, I haven't like resolved it within me to make, to then like make it funny. Yeah, I am, um, I, 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 it's so, <laughs> I am, it's funny that we're now talking about my anger. <laughs> we start off talking about me wanting to punch everybody out. It really is, I've come a long way with that. <laughs> it really, uh-huh. that that part of me where like it, taking things personal you know on stage or being insecure or all those things that you know make up somebody who's been abused a bunch uh-huh. you know all those things come with the territory when you get older it's like you know you're going okay i'm gonna go work out and learn how to box and learn how to fight and be really athletic because i don't want anyone to ever fucking treat me like that again i'm gonna uh, make right, sure right, 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 that i have right. some control over someone trying to abuse me again yeah, right. and then that breeds itself into is this guy disrespecting me uh-huh has You're this right. person oh i'm that dude to fuck with today and then it, it drives me into being a, a an animal uh-huh. and it took a long time for me to kind of sort that and it really affected my joke writing i bet it's oh, I bet. extremely difficult to write a joke where you're the butt of it, which most of my jokes are, you know, that's just my jokes. I'm self-deprecating. Right. But it's really hard to do that in a real way and be really honest with it if you're constantly on the defense of sure. thinking someone might take advantage of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a subconscious thing for a long time that I've had to figure out. And writing a cancer joke about me possibly dying, I mean, that's the ultimate insecurity right so i'm really proud that i was able to at least in the matter of three weeks come up with two or three bits that are working now yeah it works uh it's funny because you know i get to see a lot of like a lot of things from the like the inception yeah right and there was in the early i was like man this cancer stuff (laughs) (laughs) and then to like just i think that like second to last show there uh just it yeah, it's all coming just, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so nice to watch. I appreciate like, that. material just come to fruition. That's man. my favorite so part cool. about us touring together. It's watching each other's stuff. Watching each yeah. other, like build a. Yeah. You know, because we're the only ones cheering for one another. Yeah, yeah. Totally. You know, we're in it. Yeah, yeah. By ourselves, and then luckily we have each other. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the second portion of that. So there's no one. Well, it's different because we don't have like, a million fans out there going, "Love your new stuff." Well, when you're in New York, exactly right. And when you're in New York and you're popping around, people will see you know kind of things. Maybe you'll see somebody when they worked on something, and you'll see them like a month later, and you're like, "Hey, dude, that's really come." But you got to be taking note, right? Like I'm, I'm in the city but so infrequently. Go we're ahead. like, we're like seeing each other as it's like, yeah. "Ooh, hey, I saw you add that little yeah, thing there." I you know, we're that. like, we're doing that, which is a great, uh, it's such a great feeling. I mean, dude. it's a big reason why I think people that have crews make it faster than yeah. people alone totally because you have that element and yep. then you also have like beyond that the networking part but I, that's my favorite part about my career so far is like that i get to be with you and i get to watch you do your shit you get to watch me do my shit and we can figure out like oh that if you change that like in real time we're building jokes if I, when i'm doing shows in the city people if people are paying to see me i'm not going to do unless it's a if it's a booked club spot i'm not gonna do 10 new minutes unless no. it's that's part of the show because if you're new, paying yeah. me and you're paying to see the show i'm gonna like i've been throwing the cancer bit in the middle so i know yeah. i have proven stuff bookended even 10 new minutes anywhere is it's tough uh you kind of got to gain the trust of yeah like hey this guy's a good comedian yeah you know what I mean? If you, when I, when I see guys working, just opening with all the new stuff, like you I did it. Be really famous to do that. I did it the other night. I was like, um, we had just last night, and the microphone was broken, so there was no mic, and it was like you know six people at a bar, and you know six comics. So I was like, hey, it's kind of like an open mic. It was the six people didn't even like kind of dribbed in. Like by the t- when the thing started, I was like, this is an open mic. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, so what are the new stuff? I got to work on some stuff here, and then. 
by the time I got up there, it was a little bit of a crowd, and I and I just had already in my head this is the stuff I'm working on, and I'm like I'm doing brand new stuff that I you know one of the things that I was like wrote in a car ride over you know what I mean without a microphone and I'm like oh dude they don't know who I am Mm -hmm. to even like get on board with any of this I'm like I gotta go to some material and then shift back in just to gain their trust right I mean especially some of these shows we do like uh, these people that that come in off the street they're like they think they're just been hoodwinked I mean I you know I think some of those barked in shows yeah everyone thinks they're about to walk into Actually, I don't know what the fuck you're thinking. Because, <laughs> I mean, what are you expecting? Here's the thing. If that's how you bought your ticket. That's yeah, always, right. I want you think you're going to walk in and see some, like, comedy store I don't know. stacked lineup or have you ever, the seller? Have you ever, like, like, somebody just said something on the street and you were just like, hey, never. let's do that? Never. I've never. I Honestly, I, I have never done anything that anyone's ever asked me to do on the street. Yeah. I'm just not that adventurous. And I'm, I don't even fill out those surveys. Like that. You know what I mean? Unless it's a credit card. <laughs> I'll do a credit card. Oh, you giving out a you credit know, card? Money, I'm so broke right now that I've been looking into doing those uh, surveys for money. It is such a racket. It oh. doesn't even fucking. It's like. What about the thing where you put stamps on thing from from home? Is that a real? Uh, You're looking at that. It's. Okay. They're all. It's all the like a pyramid is, scheme. Like, that would work if I was like I had a job at McDonald's and I wanted to make some extra money. Right. I'm making too much money at other things right. for that to be worth the right. time. Like, right. if I can't figure out how to make more money than that, yeah. I might as well get a bar job. Yeah, right. Like, I already right. have a third and fourth job. It's comedy. Yeah. That's yeah. the job. This yeah. podcast and stand up yeah. and all the other shit I'm doing acting wise, that's the, the other jobs. Right. So, like, if I can't figure out how to do it, because I did a few of them, and I was like, this is not going to get me to where I got to go in a timely manner. And right. It's that's a what, lot of fun. And I don't want to be on the phone like yeah, that either. That is that a pain either. in my nuts. I can't do that either. And it, it would take you eight hours a day for a month to even make a thousand dollars at that. And that's a job. That's Dude. a job. That's another job. Yeah. That's totally. a full time job to sit on your phone. I think it's for people who are like bedridden. I guess that's, you know what? Or can't get out of the yeah. house or something like that. Yeah. yeah right. 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 Me, yeah. You know? Right. Yep. Yeah, you can make more money than that, right? But I always thought I was like, what? what? Is that something? They're like, oh, I make money while you sleep. Which is funny because that brings me to the topic yeah. that we were talking about. For I this, on that one. The, yeah. the, work, the work topic. Uh, dude, sleeping at work. Sleeping at work is one of the greatest things. Like, I, I've never, God, it's like, it's like a free, it's like I, I won something, <laughs> right? Like if you can just go take a nap at work while you're getting paid, because I've always worked like hourly jobs. Mm-hmm. I mean, a salary job, I guess if you're taking a nap, like it's not really the same reward, but like an hourly paid job. You're, you're getting one over. Oh. You really are. I, okay. <laughs> I had a job where when I first moved here, I was running a gym at the 92nd Street Y. They had me work in like, grunt hours mm-hmm so what's that mean grunt hours like so morning like real for a early? gym for a gym it would be like a 5 a.m type thing yeah so yeah. what what i but it was even worse than that because it's one thing if you're always working at 5 a.m your body gets accustomed to it right they had me working at 7 a.m on a sunday 5 a.m on the monday and then the rest of the shifts were closing at 11 Ooh. So it was like these weird hours. It was kind of impossible to do stand up, but it was a salary job. And I I didn't have a job the first 90 days I lived here. Mm-hmm. It took forever to find a gig. Yeah, yeah. So I needed the money, so I just jumped on it. Mm-hmm. And it was more money than I was making in, in San Diego. I thought it was rich. It right. was like 40,000 a year. I thought yeah, it was yeah. awful. I'm a fucking But living here, yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah. Oh, it's, it was, it's it was nothing. nothing. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was so tired because I would be doing stand up on Saturday nights. And then having to go to this job at 7 a.m. And then the next day having to go to it at 5 a.m. And I was still trying to make moves here. So I was doing, you know, open mics. Any mic I could do, I was yeah, just doing. And sure. some of them were so late. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so what, the Mondays, I would go into the back office and I would sleep on the floor because the next person that was like a manager that had access to the office wasn't coming in until like 9 30, 10. Yeah. And one of that dudes that worked for me ratted me out. So no, like, oh, some dude from the Bronx. I don't know. Fucking. So he got mad because a girl that came down. There was like a, there was a, a dormitory in there for one of these colleges. Uh huh. And they gave the girl the people. It was a female dormitory, and they would give them like a discounted membership. So a lot of the girls would come down. And he was always flirting with this girl, and this 
I didn't know they had a, they never were together. He just liked her. And this girl, he saw, I didn't know this, and this girl gave me her number. And he was, he didn't say anything to me. And it, I found out later from one of the other managers that he had been ratting me out because I was like, I'm going to take my break. Dude, that's a bitch move, it told him, like, I'm going to take my break in the off. I, I, I tried to plan the day out where I could take my break in the beginning because yeah. I knew I had to run the desk when he was going on. He was union. They made the dudes under, like, the subordinates. Managers were not union eligible. Uh, so I was a salary guy. Right. But these union dudes, they were, like, obsessed with their breaks. They were yeah. always looking to get workers' comp. Uh-huh. Uh, like, one, there was one woman who was, like, a part of the janitorial service. Uh-huh. I remember that they told me, they're like, listen, do not let her ever get on a, a stepping stool. Because I guess she'd been there for 20 years, and, like, four different times she's made herself fall off. Oh, really? So she'd get workers' comp. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> And then it was, and every time, every she would all because I was the new guy, she would always try to get okay. Hey, go, hey, <laughs> hey, don't get on that stool. <laughs> that is not necessary. And she would get on the stool to clean. Like she was about like four, five foot, like Puerto Rican lady. Uh-huh. She would get on a stool to like do something that was she could reach without. I like no, 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 that's nah, wild. Nah. Oh yeah, she would beef it too. I guess someone I told me that they watched her crumble a few times. Oh she was, sure, she was taking mankind bumps off this. Yeah, fucking yeah. School. Oh dude, that's a wild uh, thing. Well, I've all never of them t- had like they. I would all, love. All it. of them knew how to get. You. One dude was like, "It's my." One dude used to take his union breaks like they were. I mean, I I've never seen anyone but union people. St- like everything that was their benefit, they could tell you. Oh, why they, they were owed that yeah, but yeah. when it came to work they could never tell you why yeah. they needed to hey, work man that's a union they, job bro I mean, it was so yeah, fucking dude. annoying I, and then you end up picking up the pieces for these assholes oh uh, and that sucked for me it was always like yeah i guess i guess this if you're on a that smoke end break it. for 35 minutes now dude, that's because that's part of like sleeping at the job like Hell a yeah. smoke break uh there's nothing better than like a like a smoke break you just out there yo where the fuck is everybody yeah <laughs> All these dudes gone. He's trying to get a porter to clean up some kid puked in the lobby. This guy's up there, you know, playing dominoes and shit. Dude. So I, I used to sleep at that job. Sometimes so, I would come in super early because my to sleeping sleep, patterns. To were, sleep before yeah, the, because you even had to start. Yeah, because my sleeping patterns were so yeah, yeah. jacked up. I'm like, you know what? That's pretty smart. It's Monday. I'll just go in at 4 a.m. I'll get my workout in because I had the keys. I'll go take a, a sauna and then I'll just take a nap in the lounge and then I'll just go to work and shower up. So that's what I did, but that job, that was brutal. That's when I would sleep at the job. I would sleep at that uh, when I was a janitor at my high school. That was, dude, like where? Teacher's lounge? In, no, in uh, just a classroom. The, the John? Just a classroom. <laughs> you ever sleep in the John? You ever no. like you had to take it? I've had some office job where I act like I'm taking a shit. I'm just sitting on the toilet sleeping. <laughs> that's genius. I would be hung over sometimes <laughs> oh, yeah. jobs. I would just go in the john yeah. and go to sleep. Uh huh. Oh, that's beautiful. My brother, I think, has perfected the the sleep. car nap. The car you nap. You can't do that in New York City. Though. No. That's the problem. You yeah, have to yeah. figure out something else. Car nap is uh, spectacular. Oh, it's clutch. Though. The lunch yeah, yeah. car nap. I've oh, that dude. Window down. Uh huh. That seat all the way back. Hell yeah. Yeah, bro. I love a good nap. I'm a huge nap guy. Like I take Man. naps. It, it probably messes up my sleep patterns actually because I love the nap. I think it's I could fall asleep pretty much. Uh, there's very rarely uh, unless I'm like like uh, anxious. Yeah, that keeps me awake or like I'm thinking about something mm-hmm. like I'm just turning something over and over in my head. Yeah. That'll keep me awake. But normally, like physically, I could sleep. I mean, if like we just switch. put the mics down right now, I could probably just do it's a pretty it. Pretty comfortable room. Though. Dude, I going. could totally nod off in here. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> One time, uh, Zachy Peanut slept on this couch. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, can I just pull it out for you? <laughs> you know, because I want to do it up nice. Like, I bought all this shit to make oh, this pull-out bed. Oh, there's a bed in here? Oh, man, you pull this out. It's a queen-size bed. And I got, oh. like, the foam thing that covers it. I got another thing. It feels like a real bed once I do it up. Sure. And one time, Lauren was out of town. And I'm like, oh, you just stay here with me. Yeah. And I try to do it up. Like, no, 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 just a, just a couch. Oh, dude, he sweat no all over No pillowcase. The, sweat all over everything. Yeah, we had to wash the pillow. Oh, I'm sure, dude, yeah. But he slept like a baby. <laughs> dude, I bet. I bet. Like a rock. <laughs> like a big fucking rock. <laughs> Yeah, I can't fall Zaggy asleep P. Anymore. You ever fall asleep at your desk at work, though? Oh, yeah, dude. You ever do it where you... <laughs> so, any desk I ever had at a job where my back was to everybody, like in a cubicle, yeah. and I'm looking at a computer, I would just close my eyes with my hands on the keyboard 
Oh, that's to great. To just catch a, that's like great. a five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would always hide. My the, the best sleep that I would get because I snore. Oh yeah, you I, always are on the take. I, I kind people always know you're sleeping. I kind of got to get away. Yeah, yeah, for me to fall asleep in front of people, it's like, hey, dude, hey, <laughs> everybody's like, yo, what's going on over there? Uh, so so you're I was snoring get, on another level. I gotta, yeah, it is. It's bad. I gotta find like I always like a little like just hide away and just like just a nook and then just pass out. So like when I was at the uh, janitor job, I would just find like a like a room on the third floor where mm-hmm. you know like like the music room. Oh yeah. Or some like you know just uh, we couldn't get the chem lab was I I didn't sleep in there. That was. That's there why was, I always love those jobs where they would just leave me alone. Yeah. Because I can get it. The work is going to get done. Exactly. That's the thing. But just I don't want to live by your schedule. Like, yeah. I don't operate Let on your schedule. Let me just hurry up and get this done and I yeah. can fucking sleep for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. paying me to do the job. Yeah. If this is what you're saying is an eight-hour job and I do it, leave me alone. Yeah. You Stop bothering me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if I'm not slacking, it's just because... I'm good at what I'm doing. I'm right. effective. That's the thing about like a uh, like an hourly job. They're like, oh, if you get done, oh, and when you get done that, if you have time, no, dude. Yeah, I'm not. No, I have time. I'm doing that. That's the. That's thing. the job. Yeah, I'm not I'm doing, doing extra. extra shit. This fucking people love you doing extra job. shit when they when you're the grunt. They yeah. love. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they and they and we're gonna give you a pizza party. What? <laughs> What? Dude, I remember when I had that janitor job. So A uh, pizza party? How about a bonus? I was like, I need a raise. Me and the other kid were like, we need raises because we had been there. Like We're now like seniors, I guess, because we both started in 10th grade. I've been there now a year and a half. And I'm like, we need a raise. We both like in cahoots kind of like did it oh, together. Oh, yeah, you guys got together. Kind of right? Yeah, we got to come in. And he goes, uh, all right. The and our boss was the superintendent of the school, so he was the same guy that would like hand out detentions, all of that mm-hmm. stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, and I would always get leniency, like whenever I caught, got caught smoking cigarettes or something, like because you can't smoke in yeah. high school, right? So like I would always get, buddy, like, I'm a gal and I'm taking this out of your your maintenance uh, hours. I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit in detention for an hour. I'm not losing the hey. money. Yeah, but so we go and he and he's like. Okay, I'll give you guys raises. I guess maybe like the, a week or two later, and then we find out that minimum wage had just gotten increased. Uh, we found out like a month later, some other he just, kid, and he called it a raise, which what? I guess you know, I guess technically it was, but the same kid who j- just started had the same Making pay the same as page, I was like, guys? we're still getting minimum fucking wage. Yeah. Oh, dude, you know, this I'm, is the problem, man. It's like, why do you, why do you got to kick the little guy in the teeth? Because we're the easiest to kick in the teeth, totally. I guess. That's yeah, why. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is, I mean, he's, he ain't doing that to, to Joe Blow, superintendent. Try to skim off that guy's paycheck. Right. See what happens. I mean, I, I would imagine he's just coming from. He just treats us like students. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like that. I think that's what also you know tied this all in for me. I've been taken advantage of a lot in my life, right? Mm-hmm. And now as an adult, it is a. It's problematic. You know, it's not a isolated incident for me it's an overall response it all it's 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 all all, yeah you're taking advantage of me right you're not going to be paying for what you did to me you're kind of going to be paying for what a lot of people have done to me yeah right right, because now you're in that group and i didn't have a chance like my i lost my chance to bury those people yeah right so now i'm coming for you at in a level 10 bury yeah yeah. uh that but that's the because shit like that Uh uh-huh like while i'm working my ass off i'm scrubbing toilets as a teenager Luckily, you are well-rounded enough to think it's funny so your peers aren't getting the best of you when they're busting your balls oh, about yeah, it. Yeah, You're yeah. just, like, going through it. Yeah, I don't But care. imagine yeah. if, like, I was a different kid than you. I yeah, was totally. really sensitive. Totally different. Super fucked over. Yeah. Really abused. So anyone making fun of me, it was devastating. Right. And, and I, those are jobs I would have to work to make money, you know? And that would have fucked my whole life up. And imagine getting skimmed on top of that this guy's juicing me yeah oh and i didn't know about it oh see, dude see that's see it's true i don't have all that see the the skim though so I, that i take away like i skim well that's what i mean you there's a balance skim. i don't you have it i didn't have it i was working you skim me i skim i was working straight up yeah right for a long time i was mm-hmm. working like yeah. this is what you're telling me because I, I bought into the do right thing mm-hmm. you know i'm mm-hmm. gonna do right then mm-hmm. i'll do the right thing and mm-hmm. Fuck that noise. Yeah. People I mean, love I had enough selling you that dream. I had enough jobs early you. on to learn that, like, no, everybody gets over yeah. on everybody. Yeah, everyone's like, trying to just, get over. You just, you just take where you can get it, dude. And That's how it. How dare you hand off that guilt to me? 
Isn't that about oh. a bitch how they, people love to just take this guilt with you? Yeah, no. Even I, though you're skimming me. Yeah, no. I'm you're not, getting over on me, no, but I, you're making me carry guilt. I'm not taking any of that Nope. Guilt. No. Yeah, yeah that, shit, that gets me fired up. That's, that's why, why I'm like, That's when you're talking about the lady like falling off the stool. I'm like, look at her go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look at her funny. go. I think Give her a little now, bit. But yeah. I don't think it's funny then because well, I'm eating to pick up, shit. You had to pick up the slack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. I worked way I would more be like, that 40 grand I would be like, fuck this year. bitch. Yeah. If oh, I was yeah. getting the short end of that stick, oh, for sure. I'm going to feed her her dust mop. Like, seriously, if I have to do your shit and dust all this knickknack bullshit because I can't... Because you're taking jumps off the hell in the cell. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, if she would have snapped her, like if she would have really broke something, yeah. I'm into it. I, if you if you oh, are hardcore enough, right? To, if she's gonna take you know a fall, like a, you know how like a guy gets robbed with a trucker, like you gotta hit me, man, so that boss is not in on it. Yeah, right, right, right. Do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you snap your wing yeah. on doing that, all right, you deserve yeah. it. You put in the effort. Yeah, yeah don't yeah. don't do this. Oh, I sprain my ankle. Yeah. Shit. No, oh, no, I no, can't no, turn no. My head all no, the way. snap yeah. your neck on the windowsill. <laughs> come out in one of those like Andy Kaufman little fucking <laughs> neck braces. <laughs> I want the full show. I don't want just this petty yeah. bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm to all on board for that, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. I would love to watch somebody like fall down the stairs for like, you know, a million dollars. I wish dollars. they had a video highlight reel of all these worker comp fakes. Yeah. Oh, just to see people dude, beefing I would love it to try to, to get out of their job. Oh, that'd be by amazing. Tractor trailers yeah, or some Stepping uh, in front of a bus. Hell yeah, yeah Just dude. to get like nip a yeah. toe <laughs> what was that show Office Space where he got, oh yeah 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 he's got that neck brace on and he's yeah, like yeah. hey your dreams can happen too <laughs> he's almost fully fucking paralyzed that's so he tried to kill himself and then his wife caught him that's so brilliant <laughs> you can follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com for any of our tour dates uh, we're actually going to be doing a lot of fun stuff so make sure you're following us uh, on all the social medias as well and follow me at Ed McGowan Comedy on Instagram. We'll see you guys next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.